Hello everybody, Lou Warm back again. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. If you don't celebrate, I hope you had a wonderful weekend regardless. I took a little break. Uh, just, <laughs> it's been busy, as I'm sure it's probably been the case for a lot of people. So just decided, you know, let's, uh... Let's just take a break and leave it at that for a while and then come back fresh, you know? In any case, I'm back here. I'm back in action. Ready for more of Virtue's Last Reward. Hi. How are ya? Uh, last time we left off at kind of a, well, a pretty unfortunate place, really. Kay has now informed us that Luna is dead. Last time we had quite an interesting series of events occur. We were looking for Quark. We ran into Tenmyoji. Let me just pay, let, me, let me look at my notes real quick because I did go back and take some notes. Um, Yeah, so, oh, it was right after the vote, of course, of course. <clears throat> and everyone had picked Ally except for Tenmyoji and Clover. Tenmyoji seems to have betrayed Clover. He said something to Clover that made her trust him, which is which we noted was odd because Clover was in a very untrustworthy mood after the death of Alice. So I was thinking maybe he told her something about the nonary game. And considering what Tenmyoji says later, I think that's that might be more likely now. In any case, Tenmyoji betrayed Clover so that he could get Quark's number up to nine. So that he could be able to escape. Unfortunately, we still don't know where Quark is. Last time we saw him, he had the Radical 6 virus. So the prospects are not good on that. Um, later, during our investigation... We found Tenmyoji again, and he seems to think that Zero Senior, whoever that is, would have something that could be revealed with a spray. I can't remember the the actual name of the spray. You see it in police shows and stuff. But apparently that's some kind of spray can be used on the back, the reverse side of the bracelet, and he seems to think that Zero to the Senior would have something that is revealed by that. <clears throat> so obviously Tenmyoji is much more aware and, and understanding of the situation than everyone else seems to be. Uh, besides Clover and Dallas, of course. Um, <clears throat> and in that conversation, he not only told us that, but apparently he brought... Um, Quark here in the first place. So, where is this place then? I, uh, I can recall last week, I had a little conversation with Amber. And so, I'm less convinced now that we are on the moon than I was before. So, apparently this is a place you can just bring people to. Um, and why would he have brought... Quark here in the first place? How did he know about it? What was his reason? It's just uh, so many more questions have now popped up regarding him. Tenmyoji. In any case, we, uh, Phi and Sigma returned to this warehouse. We talked about the, the one, uh, the, the thing that's written on the wall um, I have the the ninth written down, but it's you know ninth misspelled, N I N E T H. And I'm thinking it's, it might be the case that there's some kind of other anagram here, but you know I've not stared at it, <laughs> try to figure it out. I doubt I can. Um, maybe I should give it a shot, but I don't really feel the motivation to right now. Um, but yeah, it looks like there's there's going to be some something is being hidden by the memento mori message. 
Um, and while we were waiting here, because we were going to meet up with everyone, we discovered the whole uh, scenario the, the, of, regarding the old woman who was killed. So apparently, we discovered a bloody handkerchief. And that led us to finding the crane and the conclusion that the crane was used to move one of the ambidex rooms over and that led us to suspect that it was luna who killed the old woman because that was her ambidex room <clears throat> of course it's not perfect that idea sigma gave up a, gave a good point that luna does have an alibi in that she was with Phi and Sigma during the uh, time when that whole crane thing had to have occurred. So while it seems that Luna would have been would have had the opportunity to do the murder, the whole issue with the crane, um, maybe not so much. So it's still a bit of a mystery at this point on what that whole sequence of events was. Uh, and as a part of that, an addendum, Alice and Clover both would have found that uh, handkerchief. And so Phi came to the idea that perhaps both of them were suspecting Luna. And, of course, now we hear from Kay that Luna is dead. So, very unfortunate series of events have occurred here. And, um, obviously, our top, top suspect right now would be Clover. Um, of course, that means, you know, if, if, if Luna is the true culprit, you know, maybe, maybe she, did, she did the deed and then someone else, for some reason, did move, you know, use the crane. Maybe, uh... Maybe Zero uh, Junior did for, you know, S and G's. Decided to move it uh, while while we were all gone. I don't know. Um, but maybe the if we're thinking Luna's the culprit, maybe Alice found out. Then she confronted Luna. Luna had a knife for some reason, killed her. And then of course Clover also realized what Alice found out. And then killed Luna in revenge. I guess that's the current idea. Of course, I don't want to believe Luna is the murderer. She's been the only one who has kind of had my mindset, where I just, I want to ally with people, you know? I'd probably be, in real life, be very terrible at this. I'd, I'd be dead very quickly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to believe it, but... Of course, Luna's now dead, so we're not going to be able to get any more answers out of her this time. Let me see. Okay. I think that does. that's about it for the wrap-up, or the review. Now let's get back into it. Let's, uh, let's, let's go see what the damage is. She's in room two in the crew quarters. The same room where Alice was murdered. Of course. Wow. Let's go see what we can find out. This was the third time I touched a body and felt cold skin. I thought it might get easier, but it had only gotten worse. I didn't think I'd ever get used to it, but I didn't want to. My hands began to shake, and I tried to steady them as I pressed a pair of fingers to her neck and checked for a pulse. Nothing, of course. Luna was dead. Her eyes were flat and empty, the pupils dilated in what could have been terror. It felt surreal, like I might blink and, and she would sit up again. She would smile and blush and look away nervously, and everything would be all right. I blinked. She lay there still, dead and pale. And I... I trust him.
Grief cracked open like an egg, and rage clambered out, hot and angry and screaming. I clawed at the inside of my chest and pounded at the back of my eyes. I squeezed them shut and ground my teeth. My hands balled into fists so tight they hurt. I took a deep breath and opened my eyes again. Another breath. I stood up and realized Kay was talking. I believe she was poisoned. See here, this device is some sort of syringe. I think it's called an injection gun. You can just put whatever you want in one of those vials and then pull the trigger. It's kind of like the needles in these bracelets. The drug they used is the same as well. The label on the vial says tubocurarine. The muscle relaxant. Yes. Since it's empty, I can only assume Luna was injected with it. You see the mark on her neck. I believe it is safe to assume that is where her attacker injected the drug. Perhaps they chose the neck for the carotid artery. Then your guess is probably correct. Luna was injected with tubocurarine, and it killed her. I don't think I mentioned this earlier. If, if Tenmyoji can be trusted, you know, that, that's the big caveat here. And if he can be trusted and his knowledge can be trusted, then I, I, don't, I just don't think I gave this enough emphasis when I mentioned it earlier. Um, the, the fact that both Sigma and Phi are not zero is pretty big. You know, we, we have two suspects crossed off our list. Now, of course, we're, we are in Sigma's perspective, so that could be seen as easy, but... I mean, you never know in a story like this. There, maybe there's memory manipulation or some crazy sci-fi thing going on that makes us an unreliable narrator or something. I don't know. But uh, specifically, definitely with Phi, knowing that she's not Zero is good. So, just wanted to... I was thinking about it, so I just wanted to make sure I got that emphasis there. Should I go get them? No, never mind. Oh, wait. I forgot to say this. What about the others? Should I go get them? No, never mind. <clears throat> I want to get your story first. What do you mean? When you left us, you and Luna went off together, right? Yes. But when we talked to Dio downstairs, he said he'd only seen you, not Luna. Why is that? Luna and I split up as soon as we got to Floor B. We determined it would be more efficient. Two of us working separately could cover more ground in less time. All right, so why were you late? What? You didn't show up till 20 minutes past the time we were supposed to meet. Sigma's asking you what you were doing. I was... resuscitating. Uh, resuscitating? Let me explain how I found her. I had gone to the warehouse five minutes before our meeting time. You had yet to show up, as had Luna. I believe I was standing between the yellow and cyan doors. Some minutes later, I heard something. It came from behind the cyan door, and sounded like a woman's scream. Well, it was actually quite faint. It was several doors away, after all. And as such, I couldn't quite make out what was being said. Or even if I had heard it at all. It seemed entirely possible that I had imagined it. I heard no other sounds for a few minutes following the scream. Eventually, the silence made me uncomfortable. Perhaps something had happened. So, I made my way to the crew quarters. As I entered the hallway, I noticed that the door to room two was slightly ajar. That was when I first suspected something was amiss. You can imagine the rest, I'm sure. I ran into the room and found Luna on the floor. So you're saying you spent a good 20 minutes trying to resuscitate her? Yes. I deduced that she had been injected with tubocurarine. Her heart had stopped. So I attempted CPR, to the best of my abilities, at least. With this mask, yeah. I was obviously unable to provide artificial respiration. I was about to ask about that. Why didn't you tell us? Because I had no reason to believe you would be in the warehouse. If you weren't, I would have wasted precious time. I chose instead to begin resuscitation immediately. As you know, even a short time without oxygen can cause serious brain damage. I felt time was of the essence, but... 
Hey, <clears throat> how much time passed between when you heard the scream and when you came in here and found her? Well, I'm afraid I can't say exactly, but I would hazard a guess that it was around three minutes. Did you see the killer? No, I did not. Then they had three minutes to escape. That would have been plenty of time. When you leave this room, immediately to your left is a door that connects to the hallway. I assume they left that way. Is there any chance they hid in this room somewhere? No, I examined the room thoroughly before I left to find you. Um, may I say something? Yeah, sure. I'm not sure if this has anything to do with Luna, but there was something I wanted to point out. Look at Alice. Do you notice anything? The knife is missing. The weapon. It's gone. Indeed. The wound suggests a knife, but I doubt we'll know now. The fact that they keep questioning, they, they did this at, like an episode or two ago. This is not the first time they keep questioning whether it was a knife, which I find a bit odd. The handle definitely looked knife-like to me, but they keep questioning that. Then did the killer take it? How would I know? Maybe they took it before Luna was murdered. Why are you asking me? If they had it, why not use it to kill Luna? Hmm. Yeah, that would make sense. What? Sigma, if you were going to kill someone, which of these two methods would you use? Well, I wouldn't kill anyone. This is hypothetical. I would choose the injection gun. Right? Most people would choose that. The more you can divorce yourself from the actual killing, the easier it is to kill someone. There's a big difference between stabbing someone and injecting them with poison. So, you're saying they took the knife before they killed her? No. I don't know either way. They could have taken it afterwards. There's no way for us to know. Could they have done that in the three minutes before Kay got here? It's not impossible. Three minutes is longer than you think. Anyway, what I was trying to say is that I don't know when they took the knife or whatever it was. We came here to get Alice's bracelet. And then Kay came by later. There was probably about a 30 minute window. Anyone could have taken it. They might not even have been the same person who killed Luna. Or it could be. There really isn't any way to know. And if we don't know, we really shouldn't try and draw conclusions. That could color our reasoning and that's not good. Conclusions without any evidence are useless. So just forget any conclusions you might have come up with. Save that brain space for something more useful. Fair enough. Well, I think that about covers it. We clear? Yeah. Good. Anyway, we should tell the others. About Luna, you mean? Yeah. We should go to the white doors then. Dio should still be there. Hopefully, Tenmyoji and Clover will be there as well. Yeah, good point. Once it's time to open that door, I'm sure they'll show up. <clears throat> Kay nodded and picked up Luna's bracelet. Please, take this with you. He held it out to me. I stared down at the bracelet. It felt wrong to just take it. Like we were just using and abandoning her. Is something the matter? You and Fi are the magenta pair. Without the green solo bracelet, you won't be able to open the secondary door. I know. It's just... Then... He pressed the bracelet gently into my hand. If you don't wish Luna's death to be meaningless, then you must survive. Or do you intend to die without catching her killer? Right. Yeah. I sighed and closed my hand around the cold metal. Good. Shall we go? See, now that, that, Sigma's whole reaction to, I get he's our protagonist and we're, he's, and so he's, you know, our stand-in. And he's shown to be more empath, you know, empathetic, it feels like, than most of the others here. Except, you know, maybe Luna. 
But um, I found his reaction to Alice's death a bit odd. You know, maybe it's some morphogenic field stuff going on. And so maybe it's something where, like, in previous timelines, they, they got more friendly. But <clears throat> at least from my understanding, we, you know, we didn't, in this route, we've not been with her, like, you know, at all before she died. And yet he reacted to her death, you know, like it was a close friend. <clears throat> Um, you know, it's not that the death can't be shocking and frightening, and it's just, <clears throat> it seemed to be a bit more than that for him. But this one definitely feels like it, it is, his reaction was appropriate, because, you know, we've been through two doors together, and more than that, <clears throat> in both votes, we've chosen ally. So we've, we've really connected, in a way, <clears throat> through that. And so that, this definitely feels, uh... This makes sense to me, bet more than the, the reaction to Alice did. And I gotta say, you know, Kay's growing on me, you know? And I don't know how to feel about that because I don't know if they're doing... Because the whole mech suit thing looking guy, he's obviously at first glance supposed to be suspicious and then you 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 immediately think afterward oh maybe that's just you know to throw you off and he's actually a good guy and then you think wait maybe that's the you know that's the bait you know you think ah oh, they're just fooling you so he's actually a good guy but wait no that's that's the real trick he's actually the bad guy you know so i'm kind of liking him but i i can't help that you know I'm worried I'm getting screwed around with. I just don't know which way they're doing it. That's that's the the thing. But I mean, he's been he's, he's similar to Fi in that he's like completely logical. But he does have moments of 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 empathy with people and and so that's you know where Fi has her sarcasm and uh so he's like a more empathetic Fi. Um so, I mean, I, I, I like him, but uh, I just hope that doesn't come back to bite me. <laughs> That's a thing. Wait. Shit. Did something happen? No. Well, not yet. We might be looking at a worst-case scenario. Uh, excuse me? Uh, I have to think. Are we... Is there going to be some way where... Okay, no, just go ahead, Five. God... What the hell is wrong with me? How did I miss this? I'm sorry. This is my fault. It's just... Ugh, there was so much going on, I wasn't thinking. Fine, just tell us what's going on. What is it, goddammit? What did you miss? Quark. Quark? Oh! Oh shit. Tamyoji's a red solo. Clover's a cyan pair. Quark's the other cyan pair. If he's not with them, they can't get through the secondary door. Yeah, exactly. Oh dear, this is bad. And if they haven't gotten in by the time the primary door shuts, they'll be penalized if we haven't found Quark by then. Time. How much time do we have left? Ooh. Oh no. Let's just go to the warehouse on floor B. Perhaps Quark has already been found. I sure hope so. Let's move.
Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. You're late. The fuck were you thinking? You trying to kill me? <sighs> what about Quark? What? Did they find Quark? How the fuck would I know? I've been here. Look, forget about him. Where's Alice's bracelet? Which one of you has it? What about Tenmyoji and Clover? Have they come back yet? Look around, asshole. What do you think? Uh. Hey, pay attention. The bracelet. Do you have Alice's bracelet? Hand it over. If I pulled it out of her pocket, the face still shone with blue light. This had been Alice's bracelet. Vi's eyes never left Dio's as she carefully handed the bracelet to Kay. Good. Let's go. Hey, what is this? What, you don't like this door? Fine, we can take a different one. As long as we're in the right group, it shouldn't matter which door we take. That's not the issue. Then please, tell me. What the fuck is the issue? Being a human being, three of us still haven't arrived. If we leave them behind... Oh, come on! Now you're gonna grow a heart? If you stay here, you're gonna kill me! But... Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. All right, fine. I'll be honest with you. The truth is, I've got a kid. A baby. Really? Okay. I was told that if I didn't win this game, my kid's as good as dead. H who told you win? What? That's... You have to trust me. I swear, it's God's honest truth. Zero told me to keep it under wraps, but I figure I don't have a lot of choice right now. I'll tell you more once we get inside. Please. It's a lie. Don't listen to him. I wanted to scream. Dio was obviously lying, but it looked like Kay was buying it. But he had to go in. I couldn't try and stop him. If I did, they'd both die. You have to believe me, Kay. Please. If you won't do it for me, do it for my kid. If I lose, it's all over. Please. Kay turned to look at me and Fi. We both nodded silently back. I understand. Let's go. Really? Yes. I have one condition, Hella. A condition? Yes. But it's not for you, Dio. Sigma, I want you and Phi to go into one of the doors as well. Dio and huh? I cannot be the only survivors. I would have the two of you join us. That is my condition. What a guy, man. What a... That's incredible. Damn it. Couldn't make this easy, could you? What do you say? The decision is yours. No. I can't do that. You're asking me to leave three people to die. Use your fucking head for once. You're gonna get us killed. Is that what you want? I can't just leave them behind. Me either. I agree with Sigma. Wow. Fai usually doesn't. We can't just ditch them. I'm staying. Bunch of Fai. fucking idiots. One minute remains until is this just doors is this close. just how this route ends? Do we just all die? I see. I suspected that would be your answer. You leave me with no choice then. My apologies. Huh? Oh my goodness. We just got taken out. You have my sympathy. I wish there was another way. Why? Do you actually believe, Dio? No, of course not. I only wish to save you. If I had not forced the issue, neither of you would have budged. Such is your character. Kate, what are you... Doing. I confess I am not entirely sure. I will think about it during the 10 seconds that remain. Goodbye. Kay turned and left, quickly disappearing outside of our door. Find I lay on the floor moaning, curled around our aching stomachs. Two. One. Zero. Yeah, that, uh... 
big big uh, mech suit looking thing. That's not just for show. <laughs> Chromatic doors closing. Not quite able to walk yet, Fi and I crawled out of the secondary door. The punch Kay had given me had been incredibly powerful, and my arms and legs felt still felt numb and tingly. Can you stand? Yeah. Can we just sit here for a moment, though? My body's going to be fine, but I think I need a little time to get my feelings sorted out. Yeah, I mean... Tenmyoji and Clover are, are done for, right? I nodded, and we sat there in silence. No matter what I did, I couldn't get their faces out of my head. Tenmyoji, Clover, Quark. I hoped they were all right somehow, but... I wasn't sure how much time had passed before Fi finally stood up. We should go. And that was it. She turned and headed for the end of the hallway, feet dragging, as if she was carrying something heavy. It was a moment or two before I followed. Security. Oh boy. Did you see the plaque on the door? Yeah. It said security. The footage from the surveillance cameras might run through here. Does that mean we'll be able to see what's going on in the rest of the facility? I'm not sure. Right now, all the screens are dark. Even if we could activate them, I doubt Zero is just going to let us watch whatever we want. Yeah. I'm just... I'm worried about them. We don't know what happened to Kay and to you either. Yeah. Well, let's see what we can do here. Seek a way out. Okay. How long have I been going? Uh, a good amount. I do have to say, um, one thing real quick. Um, where is it? Was it here that I did this? Where was it? Um, where's the dang thing? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so before continuing on, I just wanted to mention a few episodes back, um, Claudius White commented and was talking about how on the last one of these that I did, it was the Gollum Bay, and I looked at it too, and it really does sort of feel like I'm kind of rushing and stressing out on it, so... I'm probably going to start looking for things in here, but I'm very likely not going to finish the escape room. So I'm going to just, I'm going to try and, you know, you know, relax a bit and take my time. And if I don't finish it, you know, within an episode, I'm going to say that's okay. So, um, yeah because I don't need to be stressing myself out more than usual, you know? Some binders. All in code. Coded binders. What is this? Some kind of machine that we don't understand. Fair enough. Red chair. 
Ooh. Touch screen. I need to put in a password. I don't know what that is. Except the red chair might be important. Okay, it looks like we're dealing with some color-coded stuff here. Blank TV. Oops. I can use WASD to uh, look around more smoothly, I discovered last time. Green. Red, yellow, green. Okay. <clears throat> and these are the only things we're looking up at here. More binders. Oh, are these fuses? Just switches. that change. Here we go. Oh, I should probably have switched them all on first, huh? Two warehouses, Gollum Bay, <clears throat> an Ambidex room, don't know which one, crew quarters, is that the infirmary, lounge, <clears throat> I think that was the place Phi, Dio, and K went, and some game room, we saw Tenmyoji there, don't see anybody. Okay. Obviously, we're seeing more color coded stuff. There's the exit. Let's head up here. What's this? with the red sand. <laughs> so it does. This has me a bit worried. Got a lion thing with uh, something. Lion eating a sun. It's a light switch. Okay. Uh, 
Uh-oh. I'm a bit worried. So this red and green, red and green. You know what? This might be the time to employ the other piece of advice Claudius gave. Pen and paper. One second, please. Okay. All right, I have my little pen and paper. Let's, um... So we got hexagons and triangles. Let's say... We got eight green hexagons. nine red triangles and then of course it'd be the it'd be the same as the other side just the just the reverse right yeah so Okay, not sure where that leaves us, but to interact with. We're just gathering information right now. Okay, nothing with that yet. Interesting that we can switch these off and on. What does that mean for us? Can be numbers. Oh. Hmm. So the only thing I seem to be able to interact with are the uh, password screens obviously we have we have, we have this which is something but I don't know wh what for what 
I have 11 and 4 on those. It's good. I don't think we went down here when it was dark. Is there anything else to look at? Oh, here we go. Here we go, here we go. I don't know where that came from. Okay. Let's write this down. Um, we'll say, we'll just do it under their colors. So blue. Blue is... S D M A S. Green is A D G B. Yellow S G D Q N Y. Cyan. T I S G Purple Z Y K G L P and then red T M J Y U V G J. And I have that in the order from ascending to descending here. So let's see if that works, shall we? We have red to T M J. Y U V G J. Nice. Ha, <laughs> cake walk. Let's click it. Change the colors to the correct ones by clicking the hexagons, triangles. You only have four moves. Oh my. Oh boy, one of these. Here's the question, do we... Oh, we're on this side of the room, right? So do we want green hexagons? doesn't work at all, huh? Let's, uh, let's do the other. Hang on. Let's, let's, let's unlock these other computers first. Yellow is SG... D Q N Y Ah 
Aha. And this one is with the... Yeah. Oh boy. Um. For a second. Yeah, eleven. So like what like like the ones we have, yeah. So what? For Seven. I thought that was going to be some complicated thing. What the heck is this? goes there, what? Right? Discounting on me? Okay. What happens if we... I'm curious. Let's turn the light back on. do that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What did that say? Yeah, okay. So I was right. trying to say. I'm assuming we need the me, right? She knows me. I don't think that even works.
Bam. Oh, I can do this. Interesting. So not she knows me. No, she me. No. I'm so caught up on whether we need the me there. Period here too. I didn't even notice. Okay, hold on. Did not even notice that. Something weird like this. Oh, oh, my goodness. I didn't even think that would, uh, okay. She knows everything. That's kind of freaky. Hmm. Blue screen. Oh, this is it. there. Can we flip them back? Okay. You know, let's call it there. Yeah, we're about on time. We got the first password. We're going to be continuing on. We've we still got the two chair things to look at. Um, good progress, I feel like. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll recap everything that was said last time. Uh, quite quite a lot happened this time. Kay's being a, I'm really impressed with Kay. But again, as I mentioned earlier, I just have a few hang-ups about him that I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to psychologically get over just yet. But I want to. I want to like Kay. At least I like everything I've seen about him so far. So 
In any case, I've been the Warm. This has been Virtue's Last Reward. Hope you've been all right, and I'll see you next time.